Ready to go outside? Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Come on, Fatso. Racing to my landlord's house. We haven't been able to meet up to pay rent. And she called me up. She's Chinese and she's super rich. She called me up. Where are you at? I was like, all right, I'll be there in five minutes. That was like 25 minutes ago. Oh boy. Of course we have traffic. Isn't this always the case? Whenever you have to do something or go somewhere, you have to be somewhere in a hurry. This construction. And then those people that hold the stop and slow sign, yo, they have like all the power in the world. They're just like, nah, son. All right, now you just sit tight right there while I let these 320 other cars go. So I just put out a video on the Canon G7X Mark III the other day, and basically I was bashing it. And rightfully so. I don't take back anything I said in that video. But I'm not really looking to steer you guys in any direction and say that this camera is complete 100% dog crap. It has some good qualities about it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over some of the pros and some of the cons of this camera. This entire video is being shot on a G7X Mark III. See what it brings to the table in the long run. Because I wasn't really impressed in my first video and my first interactions with it. So we'll see if it gets any better for me. Who knows? Alright, so one of the first things I want to test out that I haven't really had a great chance to play with is HDR mode. Now we're shooting this whole video in 1080p because I don't feel like dealing with any 4K overheating issues, which this camera does have, but we'll talk about that later. So right now we're about properly exposed, seems about right. And I'm on full manual, 1080p, 25 frames per second. And we are all the way up at F8 since the built-in ND filter is only a few stops and it's super bright and super sunny out today. So let's switch over to HDR mode, which is pretty much fully automatic. You have no control over anything. I'm not even sure how well the image stabilization works in HDR mode, but we'll check that out now. All right, so here is HDR mode. I don't know if you guys could see any difference. This is only a few seconds later, so no lighting has changed. What I did notice is it kind of cropped out a little bit when I switch to HDR mode you get a wider field of view so I'm assuming that the image stabilization on this is not even standard we're just going with the in-body image stabilization there's no type of EIS going on simultaneously with the in-body stabilization so I'm assuming that it's gonna be worse for walking and talking and vlogging all right so I'm not gonna move from this exact spot here is HDR now let's reach up and switch over so I don't know if you guys see any difference. I'll check in when I get back home. I'm sure there's something different there. Now let's check out the image stabilization walking. First we're on manual and then we'll switch over to HDR. Alright, I'm going to try to keep my arm at the exact same distance. I'm not going to move it from where I am now. And then we'll switch over to HDR right now. It definitely does crop out. The second I hit HDR, you saw the field of view gets slightly wider. So I'm assuming the image stabilization is not going to be great. Yeah, I can see it on the screen. It's a little bit more shaky. How's the background look? How's the highlights look? This is the dead body spot right here. You guys want to see the dead body spot? So those are all very tall trees and they go down very, very far. Ain't nobody, not never, looking for no dead body down there. So, you guys ever need a spot to hide something, give me a call, I'll give you a fee, and we'll get the job done. Don't worry about it. And here's manual. Zoom on into Gold's Gym. And it's not tracking the right thing. All 
All right, now let's check out the HDR. All right, so here is manual. We are at, we're still at F8 again, because it is super, super bright out today. As you can see right here, highlights are really blown out. This is manual, let's switch over to HDR and see if it makes any difference whatsoever. And I definitely notice the skin is a little brighter. It has to require some kind of extra juice, so it is doing something there. Usually it means that if you can't record in a certain mode, like 4K, when you use an HDR, it usually means that it's probably taking up a lot of juice. So I don't really know what's going on here, but I do see a difference. The skin actually definitely looks lighter. I got Piso bed. There's a little trail here that I've never been down before. So I honestly don't even know where I'm going right now. Just saw this little trail. Decided to walk down it. Man, this seems like a little Red Riding Hood trail or something here. All right, so let's go over some pros and cons of this camera. Pros, image quality looks really good. When the subject is in proper focus and everything is properly exposed, especially when you're shooting in manual, the image quality looks really good. The colors look great. Just the video looks great straight out of camera. Next is the image stabilization. I could work with this image stabilization on standard. It's more than fine enough. You're looking at it right now and I'm on a very uneven, bumpy trail ground here. I mean, it's not like an action camera or an Osmo Pocket or something along those lines. You're not getting like gimbal-like image stabilization out of this thing, but it is good. It is nice. Another thing I like is the touch screen, the flip screen. It's, it's a nice screen. Any Canon that I've used before, you could always see yourself nice and clearly on the screen. The touch controls are really responsive. Anytime you touch the focus, it's really accurate. The roll-offs and the highlights on this camera and all Canon cameras, the highlights just always look smoother. They're not really harsh on the skin. Jeez, where am I going? Why am I... Why am I out here? This is a really sketchy trail. Like I am in the middle of the woods. What am I doing here? Where does this lead to? Canon's handle ISO and temperature shifts really well. And this camera is no exception. Does a great job. Next up is the F-stop. 1.8 F-stop, you do get a nice separation between your subject and your foreground and your background. Good separation is always important. It always makes the image quality look better. I'm glad they included a built-in ND filter. Same as last time, even though, again, the ND filters in this camera are only a few stops. All right, we're really deep in the woods now, so I think I'm going to turn back. Yeah, we're going to turn back. You hear that? All right, now I got to go see what that is. I had no clue what that was. It sounded like a deer. It did sound like a deer's mating call. I don't know if you could hear that on the mic, but they got pretty ugly mating calls. It's like rawr, rawr, rawr. I got a fly following me right now. What the hell? Is, oh my God. All right, so while we still have some battery left, cause now it's starting to die. Ooh. Let's get into some of the cons here. Some of the cons I have with this camera, this camera would have been money like four years ago, but you can't be having these overheating issues in almost 2020.
so overheating in 4k it almost makes 4k unusable unless you're shooting very very short clips and you're in a cool controlled environment oof environment oof boy oh boy there's also no 4k in aperture priority there's no 4k in hdr oof jesus Oh, they're bad right here. Why did I come here? What the, what the hell's wrong with me? I never learned my lesson in my head. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe the bugs won't be out today. Jesus Christ, they're really bad where I am right now. I never been down this trail. Maybe I'll come back down at hiking one day, but I gotta suit up and spray up. Less powerful image stabilization in HDR, no 4K in aperture priority, 4K overheats. And the autofocus is bad, you know, it, it is, it, that's a lot of stuff right there, you know, especially at an $800 price tag, you know, you're looking at, I know I keep saying Sony, but it, it, they really are the best bang for your buck and you're getting the most features. You're looking at a Sony A6400 for right around $800, bigger APS-C size sensor. Better image quality, more features, way better autofocus, tracking. The only thing that I could probably say is better about this camera is the image stabilization. The A6400, you know, it's not really a camera you could walk and talk with unless you're on some kind of stabilizer. But that's really it as far as, you know, my negatives about this camera. This is for you guys or the people that might have been interested in picking up the G7X Mark III or our loyal Canon shooters. You know, this, this, this stuff is probably important to you guys, so. I also have a video coming out on the best microphones for this camera, so if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you do so. I'm going to end this video now because this battery thing is blinking like crazy. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at the underscore everything, man. I feel like I'm lost right now. If you like this video, if it was helpful at all to you, whew, give me a thumbs up. All right, people. Until next time, enjoy your day, enjoy your night, enjoy tomorrow morning. I will see you later. Salute. Resume is a heavy weight, yeah. Put it on my back, give me everything, yeah. I need, uh, I need everything, I need all of everything, yeah.